spicy mango. Kind of, kind of spicy. table plans that I have for the table that you see sometimes in the videos on the way to Native Chronicles. This table is something I built about 35 years ago and I eventually sat down and made some plans to show how it's put together because over the years I've had a number of people ask me about this table and it, uh, it may not be suited for everyone but for some people it's just ideal, uh, especially people who tend to move once in a while. They don't want a table that uh, uh, needs to be screwed into a wall or bolted down into a floor or things like that. So this is a table that can be very portable. In fact, I've actually uh, transported it up to the Yukon and back down to Alberta. Uh, in the past, I've used it a lot. It's, uh, it's never given me any trouble. It's very sturdy and it'll handle any kind of reloading task you throw at it. I can put uh, the reloading press on it. I can put uh, on this side, I put the lubricizer on it, and on, uh, I can fit my uh, case trimmer on there as well, and the melting pot. Uh, up here, you can see there's a scale platform and a case platform for arresting uh, cases. Uh, uh, not shown here, there's a powder measure that sits over top of that case platform, and uh, the case platform is handy for arresting your, the palm of your hand when you're holding uh, short cases underneath it, because it's mostly the handgun cartridges that you reload a lot. So uh, another aspect of this uh, design that's maybe that's caught the most attention is this whole apparatus for operating the spigot on your melting furnace. It's very simple to do. You just take a piece of, I think it's a one inch or three quarter inch wood dowling. You buy yourself some PVC elbows and tees and you just uh, you can squeeze them right onto those pieces of dowel, they fit in just perfectly. Then you can uh, place your foot, the toe of your foot underneath this and you can lift up to start the pour and let go of it to, to stop the pour. So it works very, very nicely. Another aspect of this table is that you have a little foot platform right here. That foot platform serves two purposes. One is to relieve back stress and when you're sitting for long periods of time, it makes a lot of difference to have one foot raised up a little bit. And uh, that little platform also serves the purpose of holding the whole table nice and secure if you're on the upstroke with your reloading press, as that can tend to uh, try to lift the table up. You just put some weight down on that little foot piece and that'll keep the table pinned to the floor real nicely. You want to have these long base legs, uh, a long base on here as well. That helps when you're doing the downstroke and the upstroke on the press to keep the table from tipping. And, and really, this uh, this handles any kind of task without any trouble at all. You don't have to bolt this table to anything for it to, to work well. So, without spending too much time on this, I'm just going to parse you through the uh, the plans of this table. You can pause on them in the video. You can copy them down. Uh, modify the dimensions as you see fit but uh, this just to give you an idea it's quite simple to put together and I've shown you the order in which to put things together to make the construction as simple as possible so the, this page here we're going to just show the plan view uh, shown here is the top of the table that's where I put my press uh, slightly off center that's where the case platform is where I put the melting furnace Here's where I put the lubricizer and I attach a case trimmer here, keeping everything all nice and compact. Uh, this is where that upright for that elevated uh, scale platform goes into the table. Uh, over here is what the frame underneath it. We'll see more on that on the next page, but uh, that should actually be rotated 90 degrees clockwise to properly fit in with the rest of this. But you can see here I have a a little wall in here so I can build shelving on this side and have a large empty space here. So moving on, we go to the first stage of construction and that's just to build these two sides. You just get the four two by fours cut to fit and your two pieces of three quarter inch thick plywood and make sure you use wood screws to attach everything nice and firm to those two by fours. The whole construction should be done with wood screws 
don't want to use nails because over time you know there's a lot of stress is applied to a table like this and you don't want things to slowly start to work loose there's the next phase after building those two sides you cut these two by fours to fit see these ones gonna stick out a little bit that's going to be shown in the next page where because the, the two by fours fit in between these as you can see here so we put these two by fours in between there and we have a diagonal come down and we have our base here 36 inches this side view here shows briefly the uh, type of door construction you can put on either end here uh, that's not absolutely necessary but if you got that space there you might as well use it I figure so you can put uh, hinges and locks and stuff on there if, if you like then we put on the tabletop tabletop is uh, strongly recommend you use two pieces of three quarter, quarter inch plywood and wood screw everything real good and tight together get it on there because that's going to take a lot of stress this uh, this edge of that tabletop Here's a little detail of that footrest I spoke about earlier and the height that you want to have it off the ground. This is a, a very important part of this uh, table's design really. It's, uh, it's what makes life a whole lot easier. And here we just have a quick little side view of you know, showing the, the reloading press mounted to the table. I have a, I make a, made a piece of uh, steel plate with the holes properly cut through it at the right spacing to bolt down to the underside of the table and then washers and lock washers good size grade 8 bolts and just suck that thing on there good and tight I tightened it on 35 years ago and it's never ever come loose so do it once do it right and forget about it and this shows the uh, powder measure how I have it on that stand just sitting above the case platform that's something you might want to do uh, but more important is the uh, high level scale platform I think that's really handy, handy. And, uh, what I do is I cut holes along the perimeter of it and the little pilots for your trimmers and, uh, and for the lubricizer uh, uh, bullets uh, the, the little uh, chucks that fit into the lubricizer for the tips of your bullets I forget what their name is but you know their stems can go in along the sides of here and form a little fence so that when you place your scale onto this platform it's not going to accidentally slip off the edge with some vibration or things like that so that's pretty important to do and here we have just another view of that scale platform from the side I'm just giving you this so you have some dimensions to go by these dimensions work well for me and here's just a little close-up of how that lifting rod uh, for the spigot valve works you know I just cut a slot in there and cut, drill a hole through there there is a, a handle on the RCBS Pro melt anyways so you, you can just take that bolt out and uh, and then slide this rod in there with that slot put the bolt back through and tighten on the handle and you got her all made it's, uh, this is one of the uh, nicest features of this table I think so if you, uh, if you like this, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, I uh, hope you enjoy the work we're producing here. We'll keep on uh, producing more as best we can. So until next time, from the Native Chronicles, God bless.